Hello everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of the few questions. So before I start with first question, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos which can be very very helpful for you all. And if you want the free PDF of this very session, then please join our telegram group. Link is in the description below. We provide all the free PDFs on that very group only. Now let's move on to first question that says which of the following defines abridged prospectus correctly. So recently SEBI has revised the format for this very kind of prospectus. So we need to understand what is a prospectus and then we'll discuss this type of abridged prospectus. All right. So let's first discuss that, then we'll come to the question and answer it. Talking about prospectus first. See, companies uh, raise money by issuing their securities to the public. Now, when they are making a public issue, they need to share a document which contains all the necessary details about the company. This document helps investors to know about the company and based on that, they take the decision whether they would like to invest in a particular company or not. So, prospectus एक ऐसा document है जिसमें company के बारे में information share की जाती है जो कि लोगों को या investors को investment decision लेने में help करती है. The document contains details about the company, about its its projects which it's going to undertake or the project it has already undertaken. The financial details are there. Then what is the objective of raising the funding? What are the terms of the issue which is going to be made? So all that is discussed in prospectus and it is thus used to invite subscriptions from the people. So in order to invite subscription to the issue, being made by the issuer, the prospectus is the document which is prepared and shared. Now talking about abridged prospectus. If I talk about the word abridged, the simple dictionary meaning of abridged is to shorten something. Kisi cheez ko short karke summarized way mein, simplified way mein share karna. That is abridged. So abridged prospectus is basically you can say a kind of a summarized version of our full-fledged prospectus. Jo hamara main prospectus banta hai jisme sari details hoti hai usme se jo bhi salient features hai most important uh, features hai all those are clubbed together and a summarized version of prospectus is prepared called the abridged prospectus how sebi defines it sebi says that it's a memorandum that contains the salient features of the prospectus as may be specified by sebi sebi ke according jo jo important cheeze ek prospectus se utha ke hame logo ke saath share karni hai highlight karni hai jo salient features hai prospectus ke uska summarized version hota hai abridged prospectus why are we discussing about abridged prospectus that's because companies act stipulates that every application form for purchasing the securities must be accompanied by abridged prospectus now you as a company want to raise the money by issuing your securities to the public so you issue a application form which they fill and they basically they um, pro, uh, are willing to invest in your company. So the in application form hota hai, uske saath abridged prospectus attach karna zaruri hai so that investors go through that and then they fill the application form to subscribe to your securities. All right. So this is whole concept of abridged prospectus. When I come back to the question and answer it, which out of the following option says that it's basically a brief summarized version of your full-fledged prospectus. It's option B. Jo kehta hai ki average prospectus ek memorandum hai jo salient features of prospectus contain karta hai. Basically, it's a brief version of the information in a full-fledged prospectus. Alright. Discussing a bit more about this. Why has SEBI revised this disclosure format? Kya kya cheeze disclose karni hai aapko average prospectus mein? Kya iska format rahega? Isko thoda sa modify kiya gaya hai. Why has SEBI modified it? Why was there a need to modify it? If I talk about the existing structure or the existing format, there was a lot of information which was there in an average prospectus. Bohut saada information thi jis wajay se ye overcrowded sa lagta tha. Jo front page especially is prospectus ka, it was overcrowded with the multitude of information which was there. 
so there was a need to simplify it to bring about more clarity more consistency especially on the front page of the offer document because of which sebi has suggested a bit of modification all right so what you should be aware about is basically what is an average prospectus now talking a bit more about that so a copy of this very prospectus need to be made available on the website of ishwar jo bhi firm uh, funding raise kar rahi hai usko ye prospectus apni website mein dalna hai it should be there available on the website of the lead managers who are dealing with such issue with the registrar and a link for downloading it must be shared in the price band advertisement you are making an advertisement for the issue so, so you should शेयर दी एवरेज परस्पेक्टिव देयर एज वेल ताकि लोग उसको डाउनलोड कर सके और कंपनी के बारे में इंफॉर्मेशन ले सके फर्दर द इश्यूअर कंपनी द कंपनी व्हिच इज रेजिंग द फंडिंग और द मर्चेंट बैंकर दे शुड मेक श्योर दैट द एवरेज परस्पेक्टिव हैज एडिक्वेट एंड एक्यूरेट इंफॉर्मेशन सो मर्चेंट बैंकर की डेफिनेशन क्या है अकॉर्डिंग टू सेबी मर्चेंट बैंकर इज द वन हु हेल्प्स इन द एंटायर इन मैनेजिंग द एंटायर इशू सो यू आर selling the securities or you are buying certain securities so uh, the merchant banker helps you with that entire process he also acts as consultant as an advisor basically managing the entire issue so the merchant or a banker or the issuer company when the average prospectus is being prepared they should make sure that all the information which is shared through that prospectus is correct accurate information enough इन्फॉर्मेशन शेयर की जा रही है और कुछ मिसलीडिंग स्टेटमेंट्स नहीं है उसमें देर शुड बी नथिंग रॉन्ग अबाउट द कंपनी व्हिच इज बीइंग शेयर टू मेक श्योर दिस वेरी थिंग ऑल द क्वालिटेटिव स्टेटमेंट्स शुड बी सब्सटैंशिएटेड विद द की परफॉर्मेंस इंडिकेटर्स और द क्वालिटेटिव फैक्टर्स आपने कोई भी स्टेटमेंट लिखी उस प्रस्पेक्टस में कंपनी हैज बीन मेकिंग प्रॉफिट्स फॉर दिस नेक्स्ट मेनी इयर्स कंपनी इज प्रोवाइडिंग अ लॉट ऑफ फंडिंग इनटू वेरियस एनवायरमेंटल फ्रेंडली एक्टिविटीज इनटू सोशल एक्टिविटीज बेसिकली कंपनी इज डूइंग सीएसआर तो ये बातें आपको हवा में नहीं करनी है इसको सपोर्ट करने के लिए आपको क्वांटिटेटिव फैक्टर्स शेयर करने हैं की परफॉर्मेंस इंडिकेटर्स शेयर करने हैं इफ यू आर सेइंग दैट यू हैव बीन मेकिंग प्रॉफिट सिंस लॉन्ग सो यू नीड टू शेयर द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ दैट वेरी प्रॉफिट यू आर डूइंग सम सीएसआर एक्टिविटीज यू नीड टू शेयर द नेसेसरी स्टेटमेंट्स शोइंग दैट सपोर्टिंग दैट क्वांटिटेटिव फैक्टर्स शुड आल्सो बी मेंशनड देन एज पर द रिवाइज्ड फॉर्मेट देयर आर वेरियस थिंग्स व्हिच नीड टू बी डिस्क्लोज्ड सो सम ऑफ दोस आर मेंशनड ओवर हियर जितना जो भी उनका फॉर्मेट है काफी बड़ा फॉर्मेट है उसमें से कुछ मेजर हाइलाइट्स की बात करूं कि क्या क्या चीजें आपको एवरेज प्रस्पेक्टिव में शेयर करनी है सो दे इंक्लूड द नेम ऑफ द प्रमोटर द डिटेल्स ऑफ द ऑफर व्हिच यू आर मेकिंग टू द पब्लिक व्हाट काइंड ऑफ इशू इज इट नाउ एट टाइम्स द एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स और द एग्जिस्टिंग प्रमोटर्स ऑफ द कंपनी दे ऑफर देयर ओन सिक्योरिटीज फॉर सेल सो सच ऑफर फॉर सेल रिलेटेड डिटेल्स शुड आल्सो बी देयर what is the total issue size then if the shares are being reserved so what are the, uh, so we should share the share reservation details then uh, the price band the minimum lot size and all, all that thing should be shared you should also uh, mention about the timelines that when you are going to start the issue when it will close and uh, then when will the securities be allotted the shares will come into your demat account when you can start the trading of equity shares so ye sari cheeze aapko disclose karni hoti hai next you also need to provide a quick response code jo qr code hota hai wo bhi sab important documents mein hona chahiye like it should be there in the front outside cover page then in the average prospectus in the price band advertisement so some important documents mein aapko qr code mention karna hai by scanning that qr code one can actually download the average prospectus or the full price prospectus the price band advertisements jo jo important documents hai wahan aapko ye qr code dena hai jise scan karke log actually aapka jo prospectus hai average prospectus hai wo download kar sake the new framework is applicable for all issues opening after 4th feb सपोर्ट वेब ऑनवर्ड सब इशूज पे ये न्यू फॉर्मेट एप्लीकेबल हो गया है दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट थिंग विच आई वॉन्टेड टू डिस्कस अबाउट एन एवरेज प्रस्पेक्टिव नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू सेकेंड क्वेश्चन दैट सेज सेबी अमेंडेड म्यूचुअल फंड रूल्स विच मैंडेटेड एम सीज एम सीज मतलब एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज टू प्रिपेयर द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एंड दी अकाउंट ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड स्कीम्स इन अकॉर्डिंग विद डैश with effect from 1st april 2023 so next year onwards the mutual fund schemes 
uh, their uh, financial statements need to be prepared according to certain standards. Which standards am I talking about? It's the Indian accounting standards. So next year onwards, to be asset management companies hai, jo mutual funds ko manage karti hai, unhe mutual fund schemes related financial statements, accounts, sub Indian accounting standards ke according banane honge. So here we need to understand two things. One, what are asset management companies? Second, what are Indian accounting standards? So we have the mutual funds where what is done? The money is pooled and then it's invested in different securities. Logo ka paisa pool karke usko alag alag bonds, stocks, alag alag type ke assets mein invest kiya jata hai. Asset management companies are the ones who manage that mutual fund. They are those companies which pool this money from different individuals, from different individual institutional investors, and then they invest it in different stocks, real estate, bonds, and so on. So asset management companies are mutual funds manage karti hai, jo paisa pool karna hai, aur usse invest karna hai, us sab handle karna kiska kaam hai, asset management company ka. So now these companies have to maintain the mutual fund related accounts according to Indian accounting standards. So, Indian accounting standards, if we talk about it, we have to understand what accounting standards are. See, there are certain principles which you should follow, certain procedures which you should follow while you, while you are preparing your financial statements. You are recording different things, uh, measuring them, disclosing them to the public in, in the form of your financial statement. So, you should adhere to certain norms, certain principles, certain practices so that some consistency is maintained, there is comparability ensured. So, those principles, procedures, standards are called the accounting standards. And Indian accounting standards are those standards which are followed by the Indian firms and they are um, basically developed keeping in mind the international standards. IFRS has the international financial reporting standards. So, usko dhyan mein rakhte hue, India ne apne standards nikale hai, which will make uh, it easier to compare your statements internationally as well. So those are Indian accounting standards which now mutual fund uh, houses also need to follow. So they need to prepare their financial statement, their statement of the profits, their statement, their balance sheet all according to the format specified by SEBI. So SEBI ne is circular mein proper format bhi share kiya hai ki aapko aise balance sheet banani hai, aise apni market financial statements banani hai. Under the guidelines, the mutual fund schemes will be, will have to prepare the opening balance sheet as per the Indian accounting standards now. Further, there is a statistics data which is shared basically. A perspective historical per unit statistics which talks about the statistics of past three years is prepared by the mutual fund houses. So, jo mutual fund create ho hai, usse related three saal ki statistics bhi disclose kiye jate the. So, SEBI has said that it's really very difficult to restate those statistics statistics. So, past three years ke statistics aap banate ho, where you contain the details about the net asset value, then about uh, the income which is generated through that mutual fund scheme. So, lot of statistics, lot of numerical data is over there. So, it's very difficult to restate the entire data. So, SEBI has said that for two years, there is no need to restate that data. Jo aapka wo statistics bane hai, do saal tak, from the adoption of this accounting standard, there is no need to restate that data, but you need to share some additional information. Aapko usko change karne ki zarwat nahi hai, lekin aapko kuch information additional hai, jo share karne padegi. And they include, first, sharing what generally accepted accounting principles are you adhering to. Agar aap Indian accounting standards nahi adhere kar rahe, to koon si principles hai, jisko aap adhere kar rahe ho, that you need to disclose. You also need to disclose the nature of the adjustments when you will comply with Indian accounting standards. You quantify the adjustments. Ko, okay? Ki aapko kya changes karne if you follow Indian accounting standards. Follow kar you don't need to quantify them, but you need to disclose the nature of such adjustments which are to be made. Alright. Moving ahead now. One more thing SEBI has cleared is that it has changed the guidelines with respect to the transactions cost of investment. There are some investments being made. So there are the uh, brokerage costs which are incurred. There are other transaction costs. So SEBI has said that they are to be charged to the revenue account. You need to, um, these brokerage and transaction costs incurred for the purpose of execution will be charged to the scheme. So aapko inko as a expense, aapko revenue account mein show karna hai. This was all about 
this very question now moving on to next question and next topic so which of the following is correct here uh, i am going to discuss a bit about switch operations being undertaken by gurmit let's discuss that thing then we'll come back to the question and answer it so recently what has happened is that government of india has done a switch operation also called an called a conversion operation transaction of its securities with rbi so ye switch operation kya hota hai and what is this thing which government has undertaken government ne apni securities ko buy back kiya hai from rbi so it would have sold certain securities to rbi and raised certain funding now what it has done it has bought back those securities this is called a switch operation now when the government is selling the securities and raising the money that's actually a liability of the government that's the loan which it owes so by switching those securities now it's actually reducing its redemption pressure it's reducing its gross borrowing okay so this kind of an operation is carried out to smooth the liability profile so yahan pe government ne jo securities sell karke borrow kiya tha paisa wo securities wo buy back kar rahe hain yani ki apni wo uh, redemption pressure kam kar rahi hai apni gross borrowing kam kar rahi hai apni liabilities kam kar rahi hai so less liabilities will be shown on its balance sheet now what is happening when uh, the government is buying back the securities it obviously has to pay the amount okay but they are making this transaction cash neutral by buying new securities so jo bhi near term ki securities unhone sell ki thi jo ab jinka maturity period pass aa raha tha and there was a need to repay the loan government has bought back this those securities okay so it has reduced its borrowing but it has not provided cash for that it has actually bought new securities which will which have maturity of more later dates so that the transaction can be made cash neutral aap apni securities wapas khareed rahe ho to aap uski jagah cash na pay karke nayi securities issue kar rahe ho so overall it helps to reduce the liability profile the near time redemption pressure for the government and kitne amount ki securities wapas khareedi hai government ne from rbi it's worth 119701 crores this much worth of securities have been bought back the transactions were carried out use, uh, using fbil ye transactions ek private limited entity ke through carried out ki gayi hai jinhe hum jise hum kehte hain financial benchmarks indian private limited what's the role of this very firm see there are certain indices certain reference rates which are used for various financial contracts earlier libor was a benchmark rate which was used as a reference rate for various contracts okay but there were manipulations with respect to that and now various alternative rates are there to which the financial contracts are actually shifting so those uh, benchmarks are the financial bank benchmarks kuch indices hai kuch reference rates hai jinhe aap financial contracts value karne mein price karne mein use karte ho so financial benchmark india private limited is that company which develops these benchmarks which administers this ye benchmark banana in administer karna ye sara kaam hai is entity ka so it prepares all kinds of benchmarks related to your money market government securities foreign exchange in india so you need to collect the data okay then you need to uh, do the necessary calculations use various methodologies to prepare these benchmarks you need to administer them manage them make sure that their integrity is maintained they are precise they are correct so all that is handled through this very company moving ahead now so government has bought back its securities from rbi we call these the government securities so government securities kya hai ye government issued a credible instruments hai instrument hai it is issued by the central government as well as the state government it's basically a government debt obligation जैसे कोई कॉर्पोरेट बॉन्ड्स इशू करके पैसा रेस करती है ऐसे ही गवर्नमेंट्स भी बॉन्ड्स इशू करके सिक्योरिटीज इशू करके फंडिंग रेस करती है तो ये गवर्नमेंट के लिए एक डेट ऑब्लिगेशन है दीज सिक्योरिटीज कैन बी शॉर्ट टर्म और लॉन्ग टर्म शॉर्ट टर्म इज लाइक टी बिल्स विच मेच्योर इन लेस देन वन ईयर लॉन्ग टर्म इज इंक्लूड योर गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स एंड डेटेड सिक्योरिटीज विच हैव मेच्योरिटी ऑफ मोर देन वन ईयर टू गिव यू सम एग्जाम्पल्स सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टी बिल्स इशू करती है बॉन्ड्स और डेटेड सिक्योरिटीज इशू करती है स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स जो बॉन्ड्स या डेटेड सिक्योरिटीज इशू करती है उन्हें हम कहते हैं स्टेट डेवलपमेंट लोन सो दीज आर फ्यू एग्जांपल्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज नाउ कमिंग बैक टू आवर क्वेश्चन एंड आंसरिंग इट व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट 
So the first one says government of India undertakes switch operations with RBI and also with market participants to smoothen the liability profile. This is correct. Financial benchmark India Private Limited administers all the benchmarks related to government securities for an exchange in Sector in India. This is also correct. GSEC is a tradable instrument. GSEC is Government Securities, short form for the government securities. It's issued by central and the state government. This is also correct. So, ye tino hi statements correct hai. So, answer is option E. Now, moving on to last question that says Dash is the first Indian entity to raise. $300 million worth money through the Formosa bond. So there is one Indian entity which has become the first entity to raise money through the Formosa bond. Which entity am I talking about? It's option A, SBI. SBI ne Formosa bond issue karke paisa raise kiya hai. So we need to understand this concept of Formosa bond. What is it? So, SPI ne $300 million worth ka Formosa bonds ke through 2.49% rate pe funding raise ki hai. Formosa bond is basically a type of a euro bond. What are euro bonds? Euro bonds are the bonds which are issued in one country but it is denominated in some other currency. So, jis country mein aap is bond ko issue kar rahe ho, ye us country ki currency mein denominate na ho ki kisi aur currency mein denominated hota hai. It's issued in a particular country but denominated in some other currency. So, Formosa bond is one such bond. It's issued in Taiwan but it's not denominated in the currency of Taiwan. So, ye Taiwan dollar may denominate na ho ki kisi or country ki currency may denominate hota hai. Lekin ye issue Taiwan mein hota hai. So, these bonds are traded on the Taipei exchange which is there in Taiwan. So, SBI is the firm with the first Indian entity which has raised money through the issue of this kind of a bond. Alright, so it shows that the foreign investors have shown confidence in India and are willing to provide the funding to the Indian markets. This bond has been listed on the Taipei Exchange, on the Singapore Exchange, Securities Trading Limited and on the Indian International Exchange. So India ka International Exchange, India ke International Financial Se uh, Services Se uh, India ke IFSC, mein, International Financial Services Service Center, Center mein, uh, operate karta hai. Wahabi bonds list kiye gai hai and 15% allocation of these bonds is for the Taiwanese investors. So this was all for today's session. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.